Yo. How can I know that you're being honest with me and did you lie to any of us? I don't think I've lied to anybody. I guess I could be lying to you. If you were alone in a room with a diagnosed sociopath, what would you ask? Have you ever been in love? What does empathy look like for you? Have you ever felt guilt? That's it, like a complicated question. Very interesting. How you doing? Pretty good. Okay, that's good. What's your name? Greg. All right, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. You should define what sociopath actually is. What age were you diagnosed? I think I was around 21, 22. How old are you? I am 33. What, what's your definition of a sociopath? Yeah. A sociopath to me is someone who has no regard for themselves or for other people. You're very impulsive, very okay. irresponsible, reckless, basically like a child. Were you surprised when you got diagnosed? I don't think surprised is the right word. I think relieved. Like I had felt out of control and I didn't understand why I was doing what I was doing for a long time. So knowing that there was an actual reason behind why I was doing these things, it was really like kind of freeing in a way. What made you think he was a sociopath? Waking up in prison was probably my first clue. Do you mind me asking what led you to go to prison? I've c committed several crimes. I was using drugs and selling to support my habit. I also have many like retail thefts. How long ago did you commit those crimes? The last time I committed any crimes was 2011. And then you haven't committed any crimes since then? I wouldn't say I haven't committed any crimes. I haven't committed any major crimes since then. Actually, I don't even drive recklessly anymore like I used to. I stopped stealing. And now that I say it, I don't know if I've been doing crimes. <laughs> I think I changed my ways. What made you make the decision to change your life? Not wanting to go back to prison. It was one of the worst experiences of my life. What do you think people most often misunderstand about being a sociopath? Personally, I think that the stereotype is that they're incredibly violent and just malicious just to be mean and like just for its own sake. At least for me, that's not how it, it presents. More often than not, people with antisocial personality disorder or sociopaths, they're just irresponsible, impulsive people that can lead to you being a little bit aggressive and irritable, but the myth that they're violent and just out of control monsters is blown way out of proportion. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Have you ever manipulated someone to benefit you? Yeah, of course. I feel like we everyone do that. Yeah. manipulates other people to an extent. We're all trying to get something out of any given relationship. Okay. I haven't really thought of it that way. For me, it's more like mutual respect and wanting to do other people to make them feel better. Yeah, I see, I see what you mean. Um, I look at all of my relationships as very transactional and it, it's just kind of the way that I engage with the world. What are some things that piss you off? When people can't admit they're wrong or made a mistake, that drives me cra absolutely Yo. crazy. And I think that's just because I used to do that, that same thing. I used to not ever admit that I was wrong. What does empathy look like for you? If you have empathy at all. So I call it cognitive empathy. It's just me making sure that I put I'm myself in it. someone else's shoes, like intentionally. My first response in any given situation is never empathy. It's usually some like logical, like solution to the problem. When oh, okay. a lot of the times that's not what people need. They need you to listen and just be there for them. Have you ever felt guilt or remorse? Is that something that you feel? That, that's a, like a complicated question. So at the time, I, I, I didn't feel bad about anything that I did. I really didn't have a care in the world. Once I move on from it, like in my head, it's, it's over to me, which isn't great when you cheated on your partner and then they don't forget about that. Yeah. But I would, I regret it now because I don't like that I put people through that and I don't like that I hurt them. But that's now, that wasn't then. I wanted to ask you what That's your crazy. childhood was like. Part of the problem is, like, I don't store memories very well, so I don't necessarily remember much of my childhood. 
Is that a, a condition associated with being a sociopath? From what I've gathered, memory is tied to emotion fairly strongly. The way that I experience emotions is not quite as deep as other people, so the emotional tie to like memories that makes them stick in your brain doesn't really happen for me that often. Did you tell your parents about your diagnosis right away? No, actually I didn't. I've only actually mentioned it to my parents one, like one time. When I told them, they didn't believe me. They're like, that's not the Greg I knew. And I guess it just speaks to how fooled I had them. They just didn't believe that I was capable of those things. Have you ever been in love? And do you feel love? I think so. Like <laughs> I do experience emotions and love and connection and closeness. It's just maybe not to the the depth or like breadth of of some other people. Who would you say is your favorite person in your life right now? <coughs> Probably my son. Followed very shortly after that by my partner. He's one of the main reasons that I've gotten better. And your diagnosis hasn't affected your parenting in any way? Wanting to be the best dad I can for him is like a huge motivating factor for me because I, I don't want him to live the same life I've lived. There's a huge genetic component to sociopathy and the other half of that is your environment. So I have to do everything I can with his environment to overcome his genetics. How did um, you feel when you first met your wife? It's, it's, it's always been her, even though there was a, a period of time where I was really not a good boyfriend. I was not a good partner. I don't deserve to still have her, but she stuck it out and knew that there was a person inside of that version of Greg that was better. Do you go to therapy? I have gone to therapy in the past. At the time I was in prison, I did have um, what's called a therapeutic community and they do cognitive behavioral therapy. And when I left prison, I didn't continue. Nowadays, it's more like self-led. Like I, I do self-exploration and with my partner, we, we kind of explore it. If something happens, she'll gently let me know. It feels, it feels like an accusation, like you're doing something wrong. I, I'll shut down. I don't like being told what to do. So a lot of the times, I don't know, I require gentle guidance. Is that you saying that you think like you've learned how to cope with being a sociopath? So the way I look at it is that I've learned how to not destroy my life by accident. I can manage to stop those thoughts and impulses before they uh, lead to actions. How can I know that you're being honest with me and did you lie to any of us? I don't think I've lied to anybody. I guess I could be lying to you, but it doesn't serve me to lie to, to you or to most people. Um, I'm here to like share my actual lived experience. I'm not gonna lie to you about it. And if you'd like a chance to meet face to face, if you manage to do it. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi! Sorry. You're good. <laughs> nice to meet you. Likewise. Hey, how you Greg. Doing? Nathan, nice to meet you, Greg. Likewise. I'm quite a face to you, so that's cool. It's a pretty face. It is. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Likewise. Nice Those are great questions. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, I think it just goes to show that that you could could have like a literal like neurological disorder but still be trying your best and still be trying to be a good person. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, I enjoyed that. I wasn't talking too much because I was just in it. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, man, good video. Chat to you lot in a bit. Love, love.